Hello and welcome into my attic. So for my first DIY, I'm going to show you a new system that I learned recently of how to transfer images onto your DIY projects. With this new system, there's no mod podging, no rubbing away paper with your fingers and no laser printing necessary. So let's get started and I'll show you how it's done. So today I'll be using a glass bottle, you can use anything you prefer. I'm just going to give a couple of coats of white paint to my bottle, uh, chalk paint or whatever you prefer. I'm just using acrylic paint with a little cornstarch and a little wood glue um, mixed in together. To do the inside neck of the bottle, I found it really useful to use a sponge hair curler and just dab around the edges. So instead of washing my dabbers here, I just thought I'd put them in a plastic tub so that they'll be ready to use next time without me having to wash them all the time. So to transfer the image onto the bottle, the bottle needs to be completely dry from the paint. So to keep my bottle still while I uh, transfer the image, I just got out these two heavy tins here and I'll stick the bottle in between the two tins so they, the bottle won't move. I chose this lovely image here which I down downloaded from the Graphics Fairy. But what you have to do is reverse the image on your computer because um, it's going face down so the, the writing needs to be um, mirror imaged. So the magic ingredient needed to uh, transfer the image, believe it or not, is just a matte sealer, a matte medium sealer. So what you need to do is take your matte medium and give it a good stir. When you, once you've done that, you uh, brush on the matte medium where you want to place your image, whether it be all over your uh, object or just in one little position. Make sure you coat it really well. When you've done that, just place your image face down onto the wet medium and press it down. Now you've got to leave your image down like that for about three minutes. And the important thing is that the paper mustn't dry, otherwise it will stick to the bottle. So uh, if you just uh, add a little bit of matte medium on top of the paper as well, just to keep the paper moist. I saw a lady on YouTube doing this system and I couldn't believe my eyes. I've never heard of this before and I tried it out and it worked. When the three minutes are up, gently pull back your paper. And hey presto, just like that, you have a beautiful transferred image. So the image will be slightly different in colour and won't be as prominent. Um, but the lady said uh, that if you spray it with an acrylic spray, the colour will um, be much more evident. You know, it, it will pop. I didn't do that because I prefer a faded look, like a, a distressed look, so I didn't do that, I left mine as is. I wanted text on the neck of the bottle as well, but it was a bit of an awkward shape and in an awkward position. So I had to tear the paper so that it would curve.
So the text on the neck of the bottle wasn't very prominent and I know why that is now. That is because the paper was too wide and I couldn't press it down. So if you ever do anything like this and you have a very th uh, thin space, make sure you cut the paper thin as well so that it fits in, you know, into the space that you need it to go into. But it came out very well anyway and I really love this technique. It came out absolutely gorgeous. I hope you find it useful as well. So this DIY is amazing to me because I see these floor cloths every time I go to the supermarket and I've always thought something can be done with these but I've never known what until today. So look guys what I made with these, look how gorgeous. So this is going to be a great DIY for minimal cost of €1.50 and the rest of the things I had in my stash already. So as you can see there are two cloths and you put one on top of the other one and then you fold them up and now we're going to stitch along this end here. This is a thicker um, cotton, it's not the normal sewing cotton, I think it might be embroidery cotton, I don't even know what it is but I know it's a thick cotton and this is a thick needle because this floor cloth is just so soft and holy that, you know, even a big needle can fit easily through it. So I used a big needle and you won't see the cotton, so don't worry about the colour or anything like that. And just stitch up this, the whole of this edge. You can just sew this haphazardly. You don't need absolutely any sewing skills to do this. You won't see the stitching at all, so don't worry about that. So once I'd finished sewing up the side, um, I turned all that stitching round to the back because, you know, I don't want to see that. And then I took one of the ends, it doesn't matter which end, and I pulled up both of the cloths. Now I'm going to sew on the bottom, just sew them together as before, haphazardly. Uh, it doesn't take, you know, not even two minutes to do. Um, it's so easy. Um, yeah, just sew up the bottom and then we'll proceed with the top. If I'd wanted a longer bag, I could have just left, uh, instead of pulling up the, the cloth, I could have just left it and just sewed the bottom as it was. But, you know, I wanted a shorter bag, that's why I pulled up the cloth. So before turning it onto the good side, I want to um, discard of these red lines here and I want to paint them black. So I'm just going to insert a piece of card and just dab on some black acrylic paint. So I'll be helping myself with masking tape and I'm gonna do a little bit at a time. And to not get black paint everywhere, before I move along to the next part, I'm going to dry everything off with the hairdryer. Now my red rim is now painted black, I'm going to paint the top of this stitching here because it's going, you know, it could notice, even though it's at the back, it might still notice a little bit. So rather it being red, I'd rather it be black.
Okay, so that's dried off and finished. I'm going to turn it onto the good side. I'm folding it over. Now you can see the red rim is now a black rim. So now the structure of the bag is done, I'm going to do a handle. I wanted string for the handle, but I didn't have one the correct colour. Uh, the nearest colour I had to the bag was this um, ball of uh, wool here. So I'm, that's what I'm going to use. So I just took three strands of wool, uh, about a metre long, and I tied a knot in the end. I then proceeded to add wooden beads onto the wall and on each side of the bead I tied a knot so it wouldn't move about and I did it um, all the way down the length of the wall uh, with a little bit of a gap in between. To help myself thread all the wool through the bead I added glue onto the wall and twiddled it a little bit just to make it stiff. There's no macrame technique here, no skill whatsoever. Just threading wool through a bead, that's it. <laughs> I cut six more strands of wool and I did another two um, groups of three, tying them in a knot, but I didn't add the beads onto these ones. Now I'm going to take all my strands and do one big knot at the top and uh, tie them all together. Helping myself with masking tape, I'm going to stick them down onto the table so that I can plait one um, single braid. So the handle or strap is done and I did want to uh, colour the beads, some of the beads in black but I forgot. So I'm going to do that now before I put it on the bag. So I'm going to take a skewer stick, just put my bead through and so I can just hold it easily. And I'm just going to take a black permanent marker and mark around the bead just haphazardly, nothing special. It, you know, it comes how it comes. I'm using a floor cloth after all. So yeah, so I'm going to do that first and then I'll just sew it onto the inside of the bag. Yeah, so if you would like your bag less floppy, just insert a piece of um, cardboard and, you know, that will just keep it a bit more rigid. Yeah, so I couldn't help myself at the last minute. I thought I'd add a clay flower to, you know, to add a bit more decoration to my bag onto the flap. So I just painted it black and then I uh, took a wet wipe and wiped away the excess of the paint. Then I just hot glued it onto the bag. So here is my cute little cloth bag and you know with the decoration you just could go on and on forever but you've just got to know when to stop sometimes you know. It's hard but you've got to do it. <laughs> So for my third DIY, I'll be showing you how I made this very old looking packing box. 
from this very new wine box. It was a Christmas present from last year and we still haven't drunk it yet. It's a very sturdy box and I like the shape of it. So the first thing I need to do is just glue the handle down because it keeps flapping and opening up. At first I thought I'd put some flowers in the bottom here uh, because I wasn't really sure how I was going to go about uh, decorating this box at this moment so I just cut off the flaps here. So I knew that I wanted the box to be like a kind of an old wood colour so I painted um, two coats of white paint all over the box um, and it was it could have done with three coats, but I like the patchy look of it, really. Like, made it look older, so I, I just gave two coats. This is it after one coat. And this is it after two. So I'd like to stick some old documents onto the box. But unfortunately I don't have any old documents so um, I'm going to have to try and make them myself. So I've pulled out these old, um, old labels from stuff that I've bought in the past. I played about on my computer trying to design something that would look good on the box and I just did these and I just printed them out on um, photocopy paper. So this was a little diary from last year which I was going to throw out because no one used it and I didn't know what to do with it. So I thought I could use it on this project as like an old document and in the end I think it's the thing that looked the most uh, realistic and most authentic so I'm going to keep it for future projects now. Sometimes these labels have uh, like plastic backing or they're a bit thick so I'm peeling off the plastic um, backing from these labels before I stick them down. So to dye all my paperwork, I'm just going to use coffee wash and one is a lighter colored coffee wash and the other is a darker coffee wash. So now I'm just having fun dyeing all my paperwork, you know, just trying to make it look old, making some shadows here and there darker here, lighter there, until I'm satisfied with the look. So this is a page of the little diary. So as you can see, there's handwriting um, here, but it's not really old handwriting, it's my handwriting. And it's not even really my handwriting. I had to change my handwriting to make it look old. And I'm gonna show you how I did it now. So I studied some images of old handwriting because I have no idea, I'm no, expert at handwriting I know nothing about it but what I did notice about this old handwriting that I was looking at was that the letters were very small and the long letters were very long and they were sweeping towards the right um yeah the letters that were long were like the letters T Y P B those kinds of letters um so I gave it a try had a practice and it came out quite well uh, also, the nib of my uh, permanent marker was very, very fine. 
um, I need a permanent marker to do this because um, I wrote on the page first and then I um, antiqued it with the coffee. So that is what you need to do um, to get this. I mean, my handwriting, I've never been able to do anything like um, in a project, handwriting or anything like that. I'm, you know, no expert whatsoever. So if you think that you're like that and you'd like to give this a try, just have a little practice, you know, study some old handwriting and just try and kind of copy it. That's what I did. And it came out really well. I was really pleased. It looks really authentic. <laughs> Here I'm just drying off the ink, even though it doesn't need it because it's a permanent marker, but you know, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Here I'm just working out how I'm going to stick them down. These are just panels for the side of the box. So these are all my pages and before I stick them down with like Mod Podge or wood glue and water, um, I'm going to splash them with some strong coffee. I'm not using anything special, just a paintbrush. Here I'm just gluing my papers to the labels. Now I'm going to begin to glue everything onto the box. For the thinner pieces I'm just using my Mod Pod and for the more thicker card I'm going to use hot glue. This is just a piece of corrugated card that I wanted to use to decorate the handle. So I want to add some rusty objects for decoration. So with this manila folder, I'm going to cut some strips and then I'll decorate it with a rusty effect. These black plastic hooks were on a packaging that I bought with some gardening gloves and I'm going to paint them rust as well. I'm going to roughen them up with sandpaper because it's smooth plastic. So here's a little trick that I do with a hair curler um, I'm going to paint this rust as well when I separate it from the sponge and then you'll see where I'll put it. 
Here are more things that I'm going to give a rust effect. Here I'm making up my rusty paint. I'm just using dark brown acrylic, a little bit of wood glue, just a couple of spoons of baking soda or bicarbonate soda, and a little cornstarch and water to just loosen it up a little bit. So all of those objects, I'm now going to paint with this brown paint. It has a gritty texture which you need to get the rust effect. So now I've painted everything brown, I'm going to dry brush over everything with orange and it really does give a rusty look. So here's my rusty metallic objects, pretend obviously. I'm using wood glue to stick on these hooks and so that my glue gets a better grip and will make them stick on much better, I'm going to scratch up the back of the hooks. My wood glue dries very shiny, so that's the absolute last thing that I want. So if I see any glue peeping out, I'm just going to brush it over with cinnamon, which, as everyone probably knows, um, gives a nice rusty effect.
So now that everything's stuck on at last, I'm going to go over the white box uh, with some brown antiquing wax and then just wipe off the excess with um, a napkin. So here is my antique box from the East India Company of London and I'm imagining it being salvaged from an old Victorian dock in the foggy East End of London. So here is the reveal and hope you enjoy it. 